All right, guys, welcome back to the second video in the RNP versus RNAV approach videos. Now, this video, we are going to specifically cover RNP or RNP slash AR approaches. If you haven't already seen the first video, I highly recommend you do so now where I cover RNAV and GPS approaches. All right, so why is this so confusing and what is the deal with RNP and X-plane aircraft that we have in the sim? We must first understand that we are fighting two separate battles when we discuss RNP approaches. The first battle, which is a real world battle that we're currently facing, is that currently all RNAV and GPS approaches are going through a renaming and standardization throughout the world. A very simple explanation is shown on the screen now of what exactly is happening. We have existing name for approaches such as GPS, GNSS, and RNP. There will be an interim naming, thank you IKO, and then there will be a final naming eventually standardizing all approaches to a very simple term. Now that we know that the naming is inconsistent and confusing, but we're going to continue to push through this problem, we now must look at the aircraft equipment requirements and the second battle that we're facing within X-Plane. The second battle that we face when we talk about RNP approaches in the simulator is that we don't have an aircraft that is 100% accurately simulating an RNP AR approach. And I specify RNP AR approach because that is the type of approach that most of you care about and want to get answers to. What makes the RNP AR approach so special is what we call an RF segment. An RF segment or a radius to fix segment on an RNAV approach is a curved line that allows you to fly very tight tolerances and shoot approaches in high terrain or with obstacles or even just in a high traffic area and it keeps the aircraft on course. Example of this would be uh, the RNF, RNP AR in Toloi and of course the example that we're going to fly here momentarily in Florida at West Palm Beach. The problem that we face with the aircraft in X-Plane is that we have a mix of both, but neither aircraft is 100% correct. In the example video here, we're going to fly the Tolis 321 RNP.1 approach into West Palm. The Flight Factor 320 most accurately depicts an RNPAR approach with requirements of 0.3 accuracy. Any more than 0.3, such as 0.2 or 0.1, accuracy on an RNPAR approach will require additional equipment and flight crew training. The additional equipment will allow for the LDEV or lateral deviation indicator to be populated on the PFD. It will also require the second autopilot be engaged, both of which are not capable in the Flight Factor 320 aircraft. Now the Tolis A321, in my opinion, will most accurately represent an RNP AR approach requiring accuracy greater than 0.3 nautical miles. For accuracy requirements greater than 0.3 nautical miles, the lateral deviation indicator is required to be displayed on the PFD. This is an equipment slash software requirement for the operator that is going to be executing these types of approaches. The only problem I potentially see is the aircraft's ability to capture final app. I think the mixture of software that is represented in the TOLIS is a little bit older than what we see in most of our current Airbuses, such as the engagement of final app mode when on the RNPAR approach, but that is not a limitation and we can still execute this RNPAR approach as long as we know how to properly activate and execute the final app mode engagement. More on this later as we fly the example into Florida. Where both aircraft are inconsistent is how they activate and capture the final app mode. In the real aircraft and modern day aircraft, depending on the software you have, the final app mode will engage a little bit further out on the approach that I can get it to engage here in the sim. This isn't too much of an issue though. I will go over this in the example video all right, now that I've thoroughly confused everybody watching this video, let's jump into the sim and fly the RNPAR approach to West Palm. 
All right, guys, so here we are back in the Tolis A321. We are going to execute the RNAV RNP Zulu runway 10 left into West Palm Beach, Florida. The reason I've chosen this approach is because it has some of the requirements and stipulations that we talked about just prior to this, such as RF required. RF, radius to fix legs. If we look here, we have an RF turn to the final approach course to line up with runway 10 left. More things to note here down on the minima page of the 10 left RNP Zulu. If you're in the Flight Factor 320 and you want to most accurately simulate an RNP approach, your minimums are going to be 448 feet because that aircraft, by definition, can only execute the RNP of 0.3 or lesser accuracy approaches. It does not have the capability modeled to simulate the LDEV or lateral deviation indicator on the PFD for approaches that are RNPAR with less than 0.3 requirements. We do have that capability in TOLUS 321, so we're going to be shooting the RNP at 0.11 accuracy, known as RNP.1, for a DA of 338 feet. Difference is only 100 feet, but it can mean the difference between going to your alternate and seeing the runway and making a nice successful touchdown. Okay, so with the aircraft's position, we're out here somewhere over the water, and I'm going to set us up for a direct to freeway. We want to make sure we read the notes here. It's very important that you read the notes whenever you see this, especially on an RNP approach. We have mandatory 5,000, and then number two is RNP.5 required. So we're going to check and enter the RNP requirement into the MCDU, which is also not simulated on the Flight Factor A320 aircraft, hence why we're going to continue flying this in the TOLUS 321. All right, let's jump into the cockpit here. You can see the aircraft is set up here. We're going uh, kind of at a dog leg here to freeway intersection. I'm going to give us a direct two. We're going to nav up. We're at 5,000 feet. You can see that I've already activated and confirmed the approach through 10,000. That's why the vertical deviation is active. And if I zoom in on my screen here, you can see our lateral deviation indicator is also on the box. I'm slowing to 250 knots. I was going a little bit faster just so I could position the aircraft for the sake of the video. All right, we'll go ahead and unpause the sim here. I'm gonna set us up with a direct to freeway insert. And at this point, we can simulate Bourbon 1, proceed direct freeway, maintain 5,000, cleared for the RNAV RNP Zulu 10 left approach. So at this point, I'm going to select approach mode. That is going to arm the final lap mode. We're gonna talk about that here in a minute. Our app nav strategy is active and we're proceeding directly to the freeway intersection. Now, for an RNP approach that is going to be classified as RNP AR approaches, with accuracy greater than 0.3, we must activate the second autopilot. So, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna come to our progress page. I've already manually entered 0.11 required. If, if, if you had something else in there, let's see if I can clear it out. Okay, so that's what it was by default. You could change that. You could set 0.5, but we're going to do 0.1 because that's our minimum. So I'm going to do 0.11, and that is our now required RMP accuracy is set. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and arm autopilot 2 for this RMP AR approach. All right, things are going to happen a little bit fast here, so try to stay with me. Upon crossing the freeway intersection, we're going to proceed to Endu. Endu also is a mandatory at 5,000 feet. In order to activate the final app mode, except for aircraft with the FMS of Honeywell Revision 1 Alpha, we must have a certain set of stipulations met so the final app mode activates. The final app mode will activate when the final mode is armed, which we can see here at armed in blue. The decel point is sequenced. We already activated and confirmed the approach phase. So we've already sequenced the decel point and the aircraft crosses in level flight, altitude, out constraint, a descending leg of the approach profile, or the aircraft is descending towards the vertical path in vertical speed FPA, open descent, or descent mode. Now, I know that means a lot. I'm just gonna basically show you how we set that up here in the airplane so you don't have to, to worry about that. We're gonna make it a little bit more simplified here for sim purposes. We're at 5,000 feet after endu, we're going to proceed to SANS. SANS is mandatory at 4,000. We're in alt cruise, so I'm going to go ahead and set 4,000 feet here. I do want to make sure we are activated. Yes, we are activated. All right, I got 4,000 feet set for the next waypoint after Endu. The reason this says alt cruise here is because just for this video purposes, I had 5,000 feet as my cruise altitude. So 
as soon as we start down, that's going to change. I also want to be looking ahead here. I know Shed is at 180 knots. Probably a good idea to start dialing back that speed a little bit early here because it's going to get a little bit steep as we come down this RNAV and we want to intercept the geometric path to activate the final lap mode. All right, here comes Endu intersection. We're 0.5 from Endu. As soon as we cross Endu, I'm going to open descent down to 4,000 feet. All right, there's Endu, open descent. Thrust idle, open descent, down we go. There's via feed next, minus 10. Let's extend flaps one. You can see now that the vertical deviation brick is going above the aircraft. That is normal in this situation. Depending on the software of your aircraft, you may have already entered final app mode. Most current software, most Airbuses that I know of in present day will already have entered the final app mode. However, we're going to go a little bit back in time here with this particular software, and we're going to continue to fly here in the app nav strategy with final app still armed. You could see here the blue stick is indicative of indi is indicative of where we're going to re-intercept the geometric path over sands. After sands intersection, we're going to maintain 4,000 till shed. Shed is at 180 knots at or above 4,000. So as long as we're at or above 4,000, we should be okay. We just want to verify our speed is indeed at 180 knots. It is critical that you make and make that 180 knot speed prior to shed as the radius to fix will be calculated upon the speed of the aircraft. The faster you are, the tighter the turn you got to make because your radius is larger. When you are on the R and PAR approach, there are stipulations and limitations to the bank angle of the aircraft. There's VFE minus 10. Let's go ahead and extend flaps two. All right, we're over sheds. At Oh, I'm sorry, we're over sands at 4,000 feet. We're proceeding to a sheedy or a shed, 180 knots, 4,000 feet. You can see now the aircraft is speed out star. Final lap is still blue, which means it is armed. We're now in altitude mode, and we're leveling off here perfectly. All right, so at this point, the aircraft is in level flight in altitude hold mode and we are going to cross a descending leg of the approach one thing we must do is set 2,000 feet after shed because our fcu altitude must be below our current altitude so that the aircraft will activate its final app mode so i've got 2,000 feet set zeiser is at 2,000 feet we know this we can see final approach point 2,000 feet zeiser and at this point, as we cross over shed, the aircraft will go into final app mode. All right, final app mode is active. We crossed over shed or sheedy, however you want to say it. The aircraft will begin down on its vertical deviation and lateral deviation track. It's important to note that one dot or one line deviation is equal to 0.1 nautical miles of deviation laterally. One dot on the vertical deviation scale is reflective of 100 feet. So right now we are pretty much right on the money. The aircraft is doing a good job at maintaining the radius to fixed turn to Zeiser. At this point, you would also set your missed approach altitude, which coincidentally is also 2,000 feet. So we're going to just maintain 2,000 feet set in the FCU. We're going to continue to just configure it to land like we would normally on this particular approach since there is no terrain or steep approach to consider. So once reaching 2,000 feet above touchdown zone at 180 knots, I will manage the speed, lower the landing gear, and continue to configure for a normal landing. Some people ask, why is the lateral deviation or vertical deviation brick green instead of magenta? Green is actually the correct color for this symbol. Originally, when the Airbus first started doing the RNP and lateral deviation, vertical deviation symbols, they were magenta. However, to help differentiate between the magenta ILS diamond, a localizer course, they've switched it to green to be more representative of the FMS flight plan on ND. We continue around the turn here. Everything is looking good. See, it's a relatively shallow bank, very stable.
and it's lining us up with the runway beautifully. Got a little off there on that vertical deviation as we roll out here, but that's okay. We're monitoring. We're within tolerances. Everything is still normal. Here's 2,000 feet. I'm going to go ahead and manage speed, lower the landing gear. With the landing gear lowered, VFV minus uh, 10, flaps 3. And with the next and final launch of flaps, flaps to full. Notify the flight attendants. Landing checklist, cabin crew advised, auto thrust is in speed mode, ECAM memo, landing, all green landing checklist is complete. Again, I'm going to note this one more time, very important on any type of RNAV approach. Once you reach the MDA minus 50 feet, the aircraft will disengage the autopilot and will revert to vertical speed and heading mode. Depending on your company SOP, it's very imperative that you disengage the autopilot prior to reaching MDA minus 50 feet and cycling off your flight directors. If you let the aircraft automatically disconnect the autopilot for you, you're going to get a red autopilot on ECAM memo up here, which is indicative of an incorrectly disengaged autopilot or perhaps an autopilot failure. All right, with runway in sight, I'm going to manually disengage the autopilot. I will also disengage both flight directors, and my preference is going to be with the bird. And from this point on, you're just on a normal position to land. All right, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. I know it's not going to be exact for every operator and every Airbus across the globe. I'm really trying to just make this a generic RNP video. There are thousands of other things that are meant to be taken into consideration, special aircrew qualifications in order to conduct RNPAR approaches in real life. But again, I'm trying to keep this as general as possible and just be a basic guide for those who want to get a little bit more accuracy flying their R and PAR approaches. I hope this video has helped you out. Please subscribe to the channel if you like this content. Until next time, guys, I'm V1. Stay safe, stay healthy. See ya.